welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you're here for my 35th episode of Floss Tube, where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and everything in between. <laughs> that you're with me today. We have some fun stuff to do. I'm gonna show you some projects that I've been working on. We're gonna do our giveaway winner and I'm gonna show you some of my haul that I got this week. So let's get started. And with that, I'd like to say thank you again. Guess what happened this week? Besides Pi Day, which, oh, Pi. So I put on my little pug. This is a t-shirt that I designed for one of my kids a couple years ago. As you can see, it is too small now. <laughs> but put it on a pug, right? <laughs> this is my 3.14 and then the pie and the crust of pie. And this was apple pie because, well, my one of my kids' favorite pies is apple pie. <laughs> so that's one of the designs that I made and I translated it into a t-shirt. But we had pie day, St. Patrick's Day. I hope everyone who celebrated St. Patrick's Day was safe and had a lovely time. I want to celebrate this week. Are you ready, Jumro, please? I reached 500 subscribers. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Thank you all who have subscribed to my channel, who have found me on YouTube and have come on this needlework journey with me. I am so grateful. I am so fortunate and you all propel me to continue to make and create and I thank you for that and with that comes the 500 uh my giveaway winner my woo giveaway winner and I did the random number generator and of course the only paper I could find as I write this down is from my kids woo hip hip, hip hooray and it is Devana Davina Davina, message me. You won! Yay! And the comment that she answered was when I asked about spring. I said, what do you love about spring? And she said, the cold weather is finally coming to an end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have short sleeves on. I'm very grateful that it's starting to warm up. Woo! I love confetti. <laughs> Thank you for all who entered and the giveaway winner. Um, Davina, let me know. You get one of my little custom carrots if you want, or I can make you something else. You just have to let me know. You get to pick out one of my books. I have my mod book here. I have the kids graph paper book. I've got my address book, my, my stitching friends. And this one is really fun. I don't know, I I haven't received any feedback if anybody actually likes it or if it works. I hope you like it, I hope it works. <laughs> I have my uh, just regular lined pumpkin rooster. I have another graph paper book. I love this one. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And in the back, I put um, some fonts and stuff just to help, you know, just a little bit. I also have my spring sketch and stitch and my cribbage sketch and stitch. And thank you all so much for your amazing, amazing comments about cribbage. I, Christine of Stitch All The Things, she plays cribbage and I got a lot of people saying they played cribbage and that just made my heart sing. Oh my goodness. I, so I started digging around and I found, I have a couple cribbage boards. And so those are my books. So, um, let me know. I got the book, the carrot, one of my patterns, and you can go on my website. I'm going to, I'll have it down below. <laughs> I, and I'll, I'm shipping it anywhere in the world. So just get a hold of me. So, and tell me your mailing address and what you want. Oh my gosh. So thank you all so much. 500. Yay. All right, what have I been working on this week? Well, I did some cleaning this week and I wanted to show a little update. I quickly, and I mean really tried to, I got this one out of the frame and it was, boy, was this one like a Fort Knox of frames. It was in a metal frame and I had to use 
gadgetry and ingenuity to get this out of a frame, let me tell you. And then I cleaned it and I cleaned it again and I could not get the round staining off, unfortunately. I, I didn't know if I should put it in another bath. Someone had suggested using OxyClean. I have not tried OxyClean. I'm very hesitant. Again, I was just gonna make it a smaller circle so the area that is stained, you wouldn't see it. So I'm not sure how to proceed with that, if I should try to remove the staining completely or just keep moving forward, preserve the actual stitching piece and have it have a smaller footprint. This I cleaned and ironed and pressed. I did not put any backing fabric or anything on it. As you see, it looks baked and basted with coffee tea dye. Oh no, that's just wear and tear. Wear and tear right there. Uh, rusty crusty. And <laughs> hey, it's awesome. I really want to do something with this. I'm going to try to integrate it somewhere, but it's got I mean, it's, it's, it's rough, but it's clean and no odor. So that's awesome. Are you ready for my little puppy? Okay. So she's started <laughs> the eyes follow and thank you all so much. So people confirmed with me that her eyes do follow you. <laughs> There's a quote from the movie, from a TV show. And they said, you know, you pay extra for that. <laughs> so look at her eyes. Doesn't she look like pretty Southern's little puppy dog? Oh my gosh. So I am having a heck of a canoodle time trying to figure out how to get this pressed better. I have pressed this and pressed it and pressed it again. It's been cleaned. It had tape on the corner or it had been glued down to the mat. Oh, that mat. Wow. <laughs> so I want to finish this and I wasn't sure if I should finish it in a round in the round and have her like regal pug or regal portrait or if I don't know if she just needs to be rehomed as is I don't know if I can have her in my house staring at me <laughs> the stitching is impeccable but those eyes just keep following me I was like having a little pug coming through <laughs> And lastly, I pressed and got started prepping my gorgeous Barbara Anna completed. And this one has some, some, some wrinkles in it that I, again, am having a really hard time getting out. I put a fusible interfacing on the back. I cut it to size and put it on. You can see that wrinkle part here. I have tried ironing it. I put a cloth, a, a cotton cloth over without any water or steam, you know, pressing it. And then I tried it with the water and steam pressing it. And I don't want to crush the stitches. Look at this beautiful piece. And I don't, if you're just tuning in, I got this piece on eBay in a fevered pitch, literally in a fevered haze, I impulse purchased this. And I feel like while I had, I was in the midst of a fever, I made a good choice. This is incredible. I have wanted to have this pattern for a while. Bendy Stitchy is stitching this right now. I think she's almost done with it and she changed the face color to a different shade of DMC to encompass more people of color. And I really respect and appreciate that. I, this again, I did not stitch. I bought it fully finished and whether you say I cheated or not, by just purchasing it fully finished, I love it and she will be finished soon. <laughs> and I will admire her in all of her stitching glory. <laughs> all right, those are the some of the projects that I worked on this week. I also worked on a review of the, the threads that I purchased. I think I showed you all last week. I had gone to my local quilt shop and purchased the Valdani and that's the 12 weight. I had this, the Weeks Dye Works 12 weight pearl cotton. Of course, we all know and well, I love <laughs> Gentle Art. I tried the avocado out and I tried out the Finca, Finca number 16. And I used a piece of linen from my stash and I just stitched away just to see and get a feel of what it was that I was gonna do. So I wanna show you what I did. 
I understand that the linen is not, the colors do not match and it looks rather garish and I understand that. However, I just wanted to see kind of what these threads would look like. This is the Watermelon Weeks. I used one strand of the Watermelon Weeks here for the coverage. This right here is the, I tried to make a urn and that's the Valdani and that is thick. I, ugh, no, that it's, I really think that that Valdani is meant for punch needle and not cross stitch or if I had a bigger count, like if, if this was like a 10 count Ada, 11 count Ada, the big thick, it would have looked better. These really bright colors and this right here, I wanted to test the variegation is bum, 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 the Sulky Petites. I purchased these online. I'm not in, affiliated with them in any way. Uh, I purchased their product after seeing <laughs> Julie from Gulf Coast Stitchers. Uh, she and her daughter did the live stream on Na of Nashville, the review. I think, I'm not sure if she's got any other recap videos, but I watched everything on Instagram, like glued to watching, and they were talking about the Sulky Petites. And Kathy Haberman, who is... I would say Kathy is one of the leading influencers in the cross stitch industry. Pretty much what she does, everyone follows. <laughs> and I say that because she, she is on point. She knows her stuff. And her beautiful pattern of the world needs more chocolate bunnies is featured featuring all of these petites and she had she used their color range to des develop a pattern and so she worked with the thread company again I am not affiliated with them in any way I watched Ka Kathy's floss tube video I drooled over all of her new releases her market releases and just love listening to her she has a wealth of knowledge over 20 years in the industry and when she speaks I listen <laughs> And so I, after watching, I went, okay, it's official. I just need to order this. So I ordered this. It came in and I tried them all out. And what they say is that one strand of the 12 weight cotton equals two strands of the typical embroidery floss. And this is the Sulky. And I was excited to try this out. I purchased, it's like, the best of blendables and what I had heard and then when again in the Nashville video they were talking about how these are different than variegated floss in that there there isn't a consistency in the color palette and how it moves so you could have different lengths of color on different strands it's not consistent I know with a lot of my like my DMC variegated I like the black forest that I really like right now it's consistent I know that if I do seven stitches full crosses the color is gonna change and you really see the striation and striping stripling striping effect so I was excited to try these out and I wanted to see if that is indeed the case if it has a kind of a uniformity to it or if you kind of see that the transgression of color transgression transcendence not transcendence you see the progression of color in a varied way. I will say I purchased the, the set here and they said these are the most popular. I didn't, there's no green in here. And I think I have an affinity to green. I really like green. I started going through my fancy flosses and realized I have like every color of aqua and teal and green. <laughs> so I only saw the green on this, the varied color. And I, I tested it out here and you can see, you can see the green and it's, oh boy, is it bright. And I, I feel like I did these colors a disservice by doing this on a coffee tea dyed r, r to practice and to see the colors. I feel like I really should have test drove these colors on a white, but live and learn. <laughs> the pink here, it's, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's like a pink purple and I love it. 
it's got very Easter color and then the yellow I did and by that point I'm going okay I, enough enough messing around let's get down to business let's get down to business <laughs> so I out of those colors I thought I'm doing something with this blue I use these two colors and are you ready I made my little tiny little I, I made a little bookmark slash sampler pillow and I'm so excited about it okay story about this little sampler <laughs> the fabric is a light blue linen and I got it at the stitching post and okay so I love blue linen I have a lot of fab I, I, again always gravitate towards it and when I went last month for my birthday celebration, we drove into Catonsville, Baltimore, and I got my scissors, and I looked, and I shopped, and my kids are running around, and they're frolicking, I'm frolicking, <laughs> gallivanting, and I purchased a piece of this tiny, a, a tiny piece of the blue linen. Well, they had this basket of all these other beautiful fabrics, something just like little remnant pieces, right? Well, they're not priced. And in the land that I live in, <laughs> if things are not priced, typically they're not sold. Because if you go to antique malls or thrift stores or something, if there's not a price, people assume that you've just taken the tag off and that they consider that theft and then they won't sell it to you. So I went up to the counter, the gracious owner, so lovely, you know, she pulls up my account and my newsletter and I, and I kind of bashfully ask, like, how much is this fabric? She goes, well, did you find it in the basket? Yeah, I found it over there. Oh, that's free. What? Free? Okay. <laughs> and she said, you you know, what you do is get the, get the fabric, stitch something on it, make it into a bookmark. It's about a big enough piece to make into a bookmark. And then tell people that you got your linen at the stitching post. And I said, bingo bongo, sold. So I got my, I got all that stuff and like $80 worth of floss and I were driving and I'm like stroking my pretty over dyed fibers. <laughs> I digress. The linen is from the Stitching Post in Baltimore. The colors are using the two sulky and I am pleasantly impressed to report that I stitched this with one strand with one thread, I used a larger, I wanna say I used a size 24 needle, my embroidery needle, and oh, I don't know why I'm trying to set this up there on the camera, sorry about that, and I just love it. And again, these are the two blues, and then with summer and spring coming along, and my favorite beverage is lemonade. I love lemonade, all variations of lemonade, strawberry, berry, you could, put it over ice, you could blend it, you could, oh, anything, <laughs> I just love it. So I, I had to put my lemon fabric with it, and so I made it into a bookmark. And then I thought, no, you know what, let's try something else. So I, again, made this into a bookmark, but I thought, why don't I try stuffing it? with one of the plethora of things that you can stuff mini pillows with. People have talked about lizard bedding, sawdust, sawdust shaving, walnut shells, sand. I'm thinking of all these things and then I went da 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 da. I have an idea. I purchased years ago and I haven't used it. I compost. I I dabble in compost. Since having kids I haven't it has not been a priority. However, I was gifted a box of compost wood shavings and it's pretty heavy. And so I opened it up to show you, they're not wood shavings, they're wood pellets. And I thought, well, could wood pellets work? So I started researching on the internet and the wood pellets, a lot of these are sold as 
bedding for, you guessed it, lizards and bunnies and all those things. Now, I don't know what kind of wood this is, but I thought, could it work in a small pillow? So your thoughts, your comments, I have not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not stuffing the pillow, but I have this and then I, so I have my, I am ready. So you all tell me if I should try to stuff this. I, I hand sewed this all. I, I did it while a child napped on me. So my corners aren't Vana pressed, but I left enough here to put in and to you know fill her up as it were so y'all tell me if i should try this <laughs> bookmarker pillow bookmarker pillow <laughs> that's my that's that's what i worked on this week again i'm very impressed with this product it's i have to say it was a joy to stitch with it really was and i love the variegation my only real critique of this is that you would have to use at least a 28 count fabric and stitching over two. 32 count would probably be preferable up to maybe a 36 count. I did not try this on 40. I assume it might be too bulky for a 40 count. However, I liked the look of this I liked the variegation that it gave me. The colors are bright. With the irregularity of the variegation, however, I would not put two strands together to stitch this on a larger weave or, you know, a 10, 11, 12. I don't, you know, I, I just, I don't, I see it working for maybe 28 if you like the sparseness, 32 and 36. So it does limit those who stitch on different fabric. I want to get some more of these. I'm gonna reach out to the company and see what they've got. But there's my little sampler. Ah! <laughs> Yay! All right, what else do we have? Oh, for my haul this week, I, I went, I, I don't know, back in episode seven, a long time ago, last year, eons ago, I had shown you how to organize your cross stitch patterns and I had talked about these really neat plastic inserts that you can put in with your binders to hold your magazine issues. Well, look at what I got this week. I got a set of three of these and they're the magazine protectors where you put it in and then you can put it in your binder. These are new old stock. I picked these up from the secondhand store. These were not new. I know they sell them online in a couple retail areas, but I got these and it was awesome that I got them because I found some more magazines this week. We went out treasure hunting and I found another copy of my bee garden. Apparently I need to get started on this. <laughs> and so this is the, issue from 1987 and I purchased this partially completed on eBay and I need to finish stitching it. I adopted it to finish to stitch. I got this issue. I, I, I love those cross stitch faces, but look at this. I was looking close. There's a goat. Remember how I said how I was in love with the kidding season for farm girl, Michelle Rudy and her goat. Look at that little goat and pig. I found a goat pattern. It's not goat load, but it's something. And then y'all know my love of carrots. I can't go one day without finding a carrot in a magazine aisle, let me tell you. And look at that face. Look at those faces. I got this issue of Cross Stitch Magazine and I'm cracking up. I love science. I, I don't know if y'all know that. I love math and science. So I was <laughs> the nuclear family with the robots and then I'm thumbing through the magazine and you see the little bird you see the little cutie my god that looks really familiar boy oh boy does that look familiar where do I know that from oh I know where that's from I own it <laughs> so it's a small world 
In case anybody wanted to stitch that little bird, it's in the January, February 1987 issue of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts Magazine with the Noah's Ark on the cover. I, apparently I'm starting to like remember things. <laughs> oh yes, that was Stitch, the 1987 edition of Cross Stitcher Magazine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Again, I want to take the 80s lace off of this and revamp it. It looks like the person added the Happy Holidays, so I'm gonna see about what I can do with that. <laughs> and the last magazine that I got Y'all know me and my save the stitches and use unconventional containers. Well, I had to get the 1970s egg carton creation craft book. I had to do it. These feature all the different crafts that you can do with the plastic and styrofoam egg cartons. And most, a lot of states, uh, the styrofoam has, styrofoam has been banned from being in the waste stream. I, I know in Maryland, they do have, they do carry them, the plastic. I, the farm that I go to, they have the cardboard, which you use the cardboard egg containers for paper mache, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother craft of Palooza. But anyway, I'm cracking up. Y'all know me and my kitschy crafts. I love them. But you know, Easter. <laughs> Holy moly. All right. Oh, I got one more thing I forgot to show you. Priscilla and Chelsea, Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, were talking about how they get a lot of floss and stuff from the thrift store. And that's how that they augment their stash. And I'm going, I have never found floss at a thrift store. I would love to find floss at a thrift store. I think this was a couple weeks ago, their floss. Oh, so I put it out into the universe. I would like to find some clean, affordable floss to add to my DMC collection. Yes, please. I got floss. Look at how pretty that is. It's all bobbinated. It's gorgeous. I haven't gone through to inventory to make sure that the numbers line up. And I'm not sure if they're DMC, but the person did a beautiful job organizing. And now I have more goodies to add to my collection. And I just feel so grateful and I feel very fortunate that I had the money to purchase them when I saw them. <laughs> I had no save the stitches this week. I am happy to report that I went to one, two, two places this week and there was no cross stitch to be found. That's okay because I came home with this little gem. What is that, Amanda May? Well, it's a little doll chair. It's a doll chair made out of clothes pins. Hello, adorable. I don't know if this person had a pattern that they worked off of or what, but I have never seen this in real life and I love it and it came home with me and I feel like there needs to be a little pin pillow on there. <laughs> me and my cute crafts. Awesome. Thank you all for joining me this week. I am excited to be making all the things, doing all the things. Thank you to my giveaway winner. Thank you all for joining me. I would love it if you have not already to like, subscribe, hit that bell button. Please be patient with me with my closed captioning. I appreciate you. You're awesome. Keep stitching and I will see you next week. Take care.